The FDA gave full approval to the Pfizer vaccine on Monday. Pfizer now asking the agency to consider a supplemental application for booster shots. And ABC 7 News has confirmed the CDC is working on establishing a timeline to prioritize specific groups to get COVID-19 booster shots. But how long should we wait in between doses? ABC 7 News reporter Stephanie Sierra tracking the details and some new information from Pfizer today, Steph. Yes, Larry, Pfizer just released new data showing the waning of protection after the second dose really starts around five to six months, not eight months as originally thought. The Wall Street Journal is now reporting the company just requested clearance for boosters to be administered now at the six month mark. This as scientists are trying to determine if waiting longer between the first two initial doses may result in more protection. COVID-19 booster shots will be here in less than a month. For those of you who received the single-dose Johnson & Johnson vaccine, should you rush to get one? If I was a healthy 30-year-old, I'm not sure I would run out to get a booster. If I was 70 and I got J&J, &J, I probably would. The company released new data today indicating their COVID-19 booster vaccine increased to antibodies ninefold 28 days after the first shot. But it's important to note this study is only based off the results of 17 people. The bigger question is if you got your J&J &J shot at least eight months ago, should you get one or two additional doses? It may turn out to be two is better than one, but it really does look like one additional dose of one of the mRNAs, whether Pfizer or Moderna does bump your immunity from your J&J &J up considerably. UCSF's Dr. Bob Walker and Dr. George Rutherford say any delay in the timeline of rolling out boosters could impact the severity of future COVID surges. Acting too late, you're going to create a longer window of potentially waning immunity um, where people could get infected. Healthcare workers and nursing home residents will be eligible in September. It's expected people over 70 will be next in October and November, and the general population in adolescents will follow by December or January. There are questions about the doses, dosages as well. Is, was there too much in it? Was there too little? That's being carefully worked out for all the pediatric vaccines. Meantime, experts are trying to determine if the three to four week gap between doses for Pfizer and Moderna was long enough to make the second shot the most effective. If you have a a little bit more of a space in between it because you get over your primary immune reaction and then you're in a point where all the cells are primed and you can get a secondary immune reaction. Do you think a longer waiting period in between doses will be recommended moving forward? Yeah, potentially. I mean, if this were more leisurely, if this were, if we had a more slow moving epidemic, you probably wouldn't have seen these three week gaps. You probably would have seen something longer. So if we had that two month waiting period in between those first two initial doses, could we be in a better place right now? Would vaccine efficacy be higher? Rutherford says it is possible, but added it would not have been worth the risk of added infections at the time, given we needed to get as many people vaccinated as possible. Live in the newsroom tonight, Stephanie Sierra, ABC 7 News. So Steph, do immunocompromised people need to get a third shot of the same vaccine they got before? And are there side effects uh, pretty much expected to be the same where, you, you know, your arm hurts for a couple of days or maybe you feel fatigue. Exactly, Larry. Yes, the, the first question, the CDC says immunocompromised patients should get a third dose of the same mRNA vaccine. But the agency pointed out a person shouldn't get more than three mRNA vaccine doses. If you're in a situation where, say, you got Moderna and Moderna isn't available for your third dose, the CDC says Pfizer in that case could still be used. As far as side effects go, they're expected to be similar to what we experienced during those first two doses. And thankfully, Larry, not any worse. Well, that's the good news. And also interesting, you can mix vaccines, which we weren't sure about early on. Stephanie, thank you.